Hello, faithful model engineers. My name is Doug, and you are at Ground Zero of the Flat Earth Workshop. This is an extra special episode, part 10 of our Tiger One RC tank build, featuring parts from Hanglong, RC Tank Legion Shop, Mato, Clark, and IMAX, maker of Tigan tanks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at putting in the transmission. We're talking about the Mato 5 to 1 metal transmission that we reviewed earlier in one of our episodes. Each side is different. There's a low motor side and a high motor side. When you're putting these transmissions into place, remember to put the low motor side in first because it's not gonna fit the other way. To put this in correctly, we're gonna to have to remove the servo base we put in during the last episode, but it's okay because everything stays put where it was with the Velcro. When you're putting in the two motors, they are very close to each other, and you have to make sure that this little area shown in the circle does not short out on the higher motor section that you're putting in now. So a nice little piece of business card works terrific in that position. There are two different screws. There's one in the back and there's one in the middle of the motor that fasten these things down. I preferred to use the hex bolts that came along with the kit, but of course you can choose to use screws if you would like to. All those who have done this type of building before know that as you're putting in wires, it begins to look like a rat nest. I prefer to use four inch pull ties to harness everything up and make it look like it's a professional installation. You just clip them off and look how beautiful. These uh, pull ties are available at electronic stores. They're also available places like Home Depot, Walmart has them. Very inexpensive and a terrific addition to your parts. One of the reasons I like to use Velcro in installation of servos, it makes it very easy to take things apart and put them back together again. If you're using screws, they can tend to strip out over time if you keep putting them in and out. Velcro is a great solution that is pretty durable over the years and easy to replace. At this step of the build, you're gonna probably want to refer to episode nine again, and that shows you exactly where all of these hookups are for your individual servos and motors and so forth, just to make sure you get them correct. Now remember, if you get them backwards, it's doable to change it all around. Now here's a quick review. First, you want to install your low motor first, then your high motor gearbox. To put in the rear bolts, you'll need to remove the servo floor temporarily and then reinstall. I bought a couple of smokers, uh, the Tigan and the Hanglong. This is version two of the Tigan, and I guess just the standard Hanglong that's available right now. I'll be doing some experimentation between these two. What I'm gonna try to do is increase the pressure, but still maintain the piston look as these things are operating. You know, if you use one of those TAR, T-A-R-R smokers, it just shoots out in a big stream and it doesn't look like it's being run by a piston motor. So we'll try to work on that. Here's the Henglong. Here's the Tykan V2, which is installed right now. And we'll get back to that change. I'll show you what we're gonna be doing a little bit later on. During the first episode of this build, when we were reviewing all the parts, we took a look at the lower hall and there is a big nameplate that says Mato Toys on it. And it's installed with a couple of screws, as you can see here. Now there's a big gap around there, which means anytime you would drive through water, it's gonna flood the bottom of this hall. So I'll be making a modification that will assist in keeping the water out. I'm gonna use three millimeter styrene and we're going to make an applique to the bottom of the hull. It's gonna cover up the Mato Toys logo, which frankly, I really like Mato parts, but I wish they would change the name to Mato instead of Mato Toys, because when you're putting $1,000 into a radio-controlled vehicle, uh, I think it's kind of outside of the toy range. We're more into model engineering is what I would prefer to call it. We're trying to make things work from a myriad of different sources, different parts that weren't really designed to go with each other. Styrene is so easy to use in this type of application too, because it just takes simple measurements. I tend to mark it with a ballpoint pen and then go at it with an X-Acto blade. I prefer to use number 11, as you know, and keep the angle real low as you cut. And then all you do is pop it out once you get the cut done. Now what that's going to do for us, when we finally put it on the hull of the tank, 
it's going to not only waterproof, but it's also going to give a little bit of resilience to that lower hull. Because if you tend to drop anything that is a cast metal, especially zinc based like this one is, there's a real chance that it's going to pop through or crack the bottom of that uh, hull especially the area that has the Mato logo in it because it's only held with two screws. And I think this solution is going to help us a lot of different ways. As we've been putting this together, I noticed that it's getting very heavy. I would say, now I have not weighed it, but probably about 10 pounds, which is going to add to the realism once we drive it because it's going to really get that suspension going. When I'm putting this styrene on the bottom of the tank, I want to give it some chamfers or bevels on the side so it really looks like it's a part of the underside. And the way you do this, you use a direct light, something that can give you a shadow. And look, I'm maintaining that parallel line on the edge. That's a good way to be able to control that angled edge all the way across a straight part. Very nice geometry. To the bottom left, I have some two-part epoxy, which I would have preferred to use, but uh, unfortunately that was empty. So I'm going to be using some cyanoacrylate. Now, the reason I prefer the two-part is because that is a chemical combination that will automatically solidify without any air touching it, which is really preferable in this type of situation. The thing with uh, cyanoacrylate, I believe what activates it is moisture. So you have to leave a little bit of area around it for air to get to it so it actually solidifies. We're also going to help that out by using kicker activator. I've done a little bit of sanding on the angles and we'll be using this Tamiya putty to fill in the gaps now. Tamiya putty is really nice stuff because it solidifies so quickly. You can really go to work on it maybe after 10-15 minutes and then put on a second coat as I've done here. You'll see that it sands off. Now the proper way to do this, you just sand it till it starts to feather on the edges. If you're using a very light sandpaper, like a 400 grit, you can just use your fingers. Well, I got a few more things in the mail that I thought I'd share with you here. And this one was kind of fun. Waited for it to come about four weeks from Japan. It's the Tamiya Wehrmacht Tank Crewman. This figure can be built a couple of ways. One is an officer in a tank crew pose, and the other one is a self-propelled gun crewman. I think one is more uptight and the other one's more laid back. They're very nicely done, and I'm not sure how old these molds are, but uh, really not a lot of flash. If you look real closely here, the hand is holding something. I have no idea what it is. Is it flowers? Is it Edelweiss? No one may ever know. Let's look at some other parts on here. We've got the very nice face detail. We've got some different hats, shoes, gun holsters. I don't think anything from the waist down is going to help as much though because I'm planning on cutting him off there and putting him in the commander's cupola. Now a little bit more about the smoke servo. I installed the Tigan version 2. This is a hanglong that I bought for about 12 bucks on eBay. This cool little blue device is an aquarium pump and I'm going to drill right above the piston and inject air there. It should hook up right to this little 5 volt terminal and uh, we'll see if it improves the amount of flow of smoke. The Clark Model TK40 control board is what's going to be controlling this tank and to be able to program that it uses just a basic Sony TV remote. This is RM871, the recommended one that you buy on Amazon for under $10. Takes a while though to arrive from China or Hong Kong. Let's put on those tracks. Man, we're getting close to getting this thing so it's in running condition. These tracks are from Tigan. They're black in color, so they've already been primed. But I'm very impressed by these compared to the Hanglong metal tracks that I've put into another tank. What I really like about them is the detail. And they also really resemble the tracks that were used in World War II. There were ones that were used for transport that were a bit thinner. This one has the wings on the side so you know which side goes outward. As we put them on the tank, we put them onto the front cog and see that the measurements are actually pretty good without adding or taking away any links. 
what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one of the pins that comes with the kit and just place it into that hole. Now, we're gonna need to take a look at a close-up pin because there are two different sides. There was a real thin, smooth side, and then there was a rougher, wider side. Put the thin side in first, the little wider side, just uh, gives a little bit of grip once you hammer it in. I use a little musical instrument hammer here. This is also used for jewelry. There is a soft side and a hard side, and they're really nice for doing modeling work because it's not a whole lot of force and very, very controllable. Here again is another look at the flared side of this pin. You just slip it into the hole. It'll thread very easily and tap it a few times with a hammer and you're good to go. Let's zoom in and look closely at the detail here. The right side and the left side are not identical. If you look really closely, you'll see there is a longer flared side shown on the right here that has some hollows in it. Those are the ones that go to the outside. And the way you can tell is there are guiding pins on the inside of the tread and those will thread, as I'll show in just a little bit here, on the rear idler wheel. The Mato 5 to 1 transmission has really been improved over previous versions, and I've decided not to use the bearing because I really don't think it's necessary here. It's extremely tight and well made. We're ready to put the track on now. The first thing I'm going to do is line up those inner pins. You see they're closer to the hull side. You're going to wrap them around the rear idler wheel. See how those fit perfectly? Now that's going to be the guide for putting on the rest of the track. I really recommend putting on a closed and complete track over putting the pins on last because you'll find it's going to be a lot easier. Just rotate the drive cog into place and fasten it with a screw. And now here's the good part. Kind of just sit back and see the fruits of our labors and they are blooming. As I said before, I think we're around 10, 12 pounds with this. It's really, really heavy. And the weight is the key to realism in tanks because it makes the suspension look real. And here it is, the winning scheme that we'll be painting this tank at the end. Tank 131, the famous tank that's in Bovington, UK, and the only one that is running in the entire world. Well, thanks for being here. Please subscribe and I'll see you next week.